All right, well, my work here is done, so let's do the fun stuff and explore this beautiful space. I've been here, I think I've only been here like four or five times. This isn't a yard that crosses my radar much. This, this might have been, um, hold on. I think this is uh, the first cemetery where I discovered what community mausoleums are. There was a, a wooded area and I don't know if I'm going to find it again today, but um, there was a wooded area that I was that I was walking through, and I approached a large structure, a large building, and I thought it was something like a monastery, or because um, there is there is a monastery here, I believe, and the building didn't really look like anything to me at, at first glance and I was hesitant to approach it if in fact it was like a residential building for monks or whatever. <laughs> um, but I did get close enough to it to realize that it was basically a glorified morgue. That might be it actually, that white structure. Well, maybe not. But it was a, it was a it was a reversal of, of sentiment because here I thought I had found a a pocket of life in the middle of a cemetery. In fact, it was entirely the opposite. All right, so let's hit the ground. A whole lot about this cemetery except um, John Gotti is here and he would be under the same roof as Charles Atlas if, if my uh, recollection is correct. Beautiful fall leaves, beautiful trees too. I'm no sucker for beauty, but I, don't, I, I at least know it when I see it. I believe this, is, this big white structure is where John Gotti and Charles Atlas are. Gotti being interred here was considered controversial because of his, well, you know, his reputation. Being a, being a mobster, but, and uh, I think other Catholic cemeteries wouldn't have taken him. I mean, there are mobsters at Old Calvary, but I don't think they had quite the reputation of John Gotti. And I think the term that they use to, the term a cemetery uses to recuse themselves from interring somebody like John Gotti is controversy. They don't want to attract controversy to their to their land. One time I was here, I discovered um, the mausoleum of somebody. I can't remember his first name, but it was Epig E P P I G, and he was the founder and owner of the Epic Beer, Beer, Beer Brewing Company. And this is another example of the sort of thing that used to happen through my websites. Um, this happened with the Johnston Mausoleum where descendants of, of the Johnstons found my website and were surprised to find that their ancestors, their forebears, were interred in such a magnificent structure. Well, similar thing happened with the Epig Mausoleum. I posted some pictures of that. 
and some descendants found it, and they were like, wow, we'd heard, we'd only heard rumors about the epic mausoleum, but we'd never actually seen it. And that's the kind of thing that used to happen, on, you know, a good amount on my websites, but link rank goes to the big boys now. So if you're looking for it, I'm, I'm like hiding in plain sight now. You just can't find me. I remember this one. I got a, I got a picture of this one a long time ago. I didn't. I only got the close up of the hands on the face, though. I didn't realize this was a full body statue. I guess that's life size. And I think I'm approaching the epic mausoleum. Coincidentally, um, I didn't realize I was in this area, but. See if I can get close enough to actually read this. Yeah, there it is, Leonard. Leonard Epic, that's what it is. I was thinking Lawrence, but it's Leonard. And that is a pretty, pretty stately structure, not to mention, not to mention uh, perch on top of the hill. But yeah, he was, uh, Leonard Epic was a big name beer brewer for, I think, early 20th century. I can't lie, this is, a really, this is a really beautiful cemetery, man. It really is. Hey, look, I found my last name. <laughs> I'm not the lead. Uh, Thomas isn't the lead name on this, but... Um. <laughs> I was just saying yesterday that I don't think I've ever seen even my last name on a tombstone. Forget about my real name, my full name. Well, there it is. Well, there's that little bucket list item <laughs> checked off. Oops. Uneven, uneven terrain. It's making this video a little jerky, I guess. I'm going to see if, if uh, I can get into this, this enormous compound, this enormous facility. A lot more trees out here than at, at Old Calvary. certain this is actually the, the building where Gotti would be and I'm not specifically intent on finding or locating his his crypt or that of Charles Atlas for that matter I just throw those names out there as a bit of trivia This is what this is what I was uh, referring to. This is a slightly different style, but in an earlier piece about the tombstones at Socrates Sculpture Park, this is the type of placeholder letter that I was referring to, where they um, when there's a fresh burial, uh, the tombstone is is never placed. You know, the day of the funeral, it's usually placed weeks or months after. So they put letters like this as placeholders to remind them where to put the stone. And the letter is the first letter of the last name of the, of the deceased. Wow, this is big. <laughs> this is a big structure for 
biggest community mausoleum I think I've ever seen. If it goes back as far as I think it does. It's like maybe six stories. Six, maybe eight, I don't know. Well, what do you know? I guess it's not open. <laughs> the uh, sliding door didn't, didn't activate. All right, fair enough. It's pandemic time after all. And I, it looked like most of the funeral services were outdoors, the ones I saw. Wow, look at how grimy this, these statues are. One in the middle looks all right. Okay, so now I know that that's called the Resurrection Mausoleum, and it appears to contain a number of chapels within. But it looks like they're all they're all closed, locked up. And if they're open, that probably means there's a funeral service of some sort going on, and that means I don't want to intrude. Wrong way to go back. That should be up. That should be at the main entrance. That should be at every entrance to this place. I'm just kidding. By the time it's it's the wrong way, it's too late to go back. So let's follow this, this little pathway. Oh, there's somebody up ahead. I don't, I stop recording when anybody enters the, enters the frame. Although in this case, he's facing the other way and he's got a honking big camera. <laughs> Hope he got a permit for that. I greeted the photographer, he smiled and waved, and I said, that's a honking big lens. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I wonder if it was a Bauer lens. Yeah, this feels positively forest-like. <laughs> When I say I've never seen my own name, there is one. Uh, I've never seen my own name on a tombstone. There is one exception that I guess I should mention that on my father's side of the family, there's a, a Thomas family cemetery out in uh, out in the sticks, <laughs> rural Tennessee, God's country they call it. And I visited it one time and. 
And yeah, all the markers said Thomas. It was <laughs> a bit of a weird feeling, but it's okay. I think I see a felled tree branch or a felled tree altogether. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. I think that's just a... From here it looked like it was at an angle, but it's just growing out that way. What I'm not seeing is any sepulchral portraits. Those are the... Uh, the older ones were made of, uh, I think, porcelain. And they had little little photos of whoever was buried there. But those tend to, you tend to see those in clusters. And I suspect that's because like one funeral home director or undertaker or whatever was particularly aggressive in, in selling them or adding them to the package. But I don't know. I do have a memory of seeing some out here in this in this yard, but I wouldn't have any idea where. I used to be really strict with myself about making video in these places because I, I think it's probably technically not allowed in this one. But these days, I mean, what can they do? I think if they, you know, if somebody came out here with tripods and lighting gear and all that kind of stuff, they might act on that. this, I mean, they'd have to really be, be looking, be on the lookout, be suspicious. Okay, I'm, I think I'm edging toward a a side of this yard that doesn't have an exit. And I do want to, I didn't want to make a whole afternoon of this, so I'm going to try to find a, an escape hatch, and I think, I think I know where it is. See, this looks like it might have been a sepulchral portrait. That word is a mouthful. I suspect that there used to be a photo there in that oval shaped space. That would make it the only one that had been out here so far. I mean, this might be one. Well, I think it, oh yes it is, it's still there. Charles J. Berger. He's only 13 years old.
Well, there's a tough name to go through life with.